We come to the end of the day of Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is, we don't say Tachanun, because as it says in Megillah, it's called Moed. The fact that it's called Moed means, the word Moed means a get-together. Va'ad, a get-together. So we get together with the Bore Olam, and every time we get together with him, we have to have something to say. We've got to come and say something. What does he want from us? Obviously, he wants us to be a bigger person, to be a better individual. And Tisha B'Av is a day in which we need to do a lot of soul searching. And in that soul searching, we somehow got to come out of it. Not just what I'm going to eat tonight, but how am I going to be a different person? How am I going to rise to the occasion to become somebody different? Somebody bigger? So we need to make some very practical setup for ourselves so that we can be able to have some guidelines. So I would like to share with you the tefillah that Shlomo HaMelech made when he inaugurated the Beit HaMikdash. It's, it's mind-boggling. And the great uh, Rabbi Matisyahu, blessed memory, would speak about this tefillah many, many times. So I want to share with you some of the tefillah. And then we're going to learn a halakha together. B'zat Hashem. <clears throat> so Shlomo HaMelech starts Lishmo el arina vel atfila Asher avedecha mitpalil vlefanecha That your Avadim, your servants are serving in front of you Skipping a pasuk Vishamata el trinat avedecha. You listen to the begging of your t- t- servants. The Amcha Yisrael ashe yipalulu. It's unbelievable words. El amakom hazeh. That if they pray to this place, the atat tishma, and you'll hear. El makom shivtachayla shemayim in heaven. You'll hear their requests. Vishamata, you'll hear it. Vishalakta, and you'll forgive them. Eshta she yichta ish l'reyeyu. If there's a problem, an inter problem between a social development, v'nasa alal alal alota va'olah, they'll make us curse, they'll make us, they'll swear. It'll come up to you. Be'ata tishma min hashemayim. And you will judge them. The words he says here, when they are you're in a, in, a, in a fight, they come and they do tshuba. They're going to pray toward you. But that you'll hear. And you'll forgive him. To the chatat amcha Yisrael, v'ashivotam el adama, and they'll bring him back to the land. You'll bring us back to that land because you forgave us. When there is no rain, lo yemata v'itpalulu el makom azeh. They'll pray toward this makom, and what will be? You'll forgive them. And there'll be rain. 
Ra'av, when there'll be a famine in the land, they'll pray to this place. Kol tefillah, kol china, shetiyeh l'chol adam, any tefillah, any request, l'chol amcha Yisrael asher yidun, ish nega levavo, will come, v'atat ishma min ha-shamayim. This makom is the makom that's ours, and that where we can have that personal relationship with the Borei Olam, and that we're able to have that connection. Because they're going to have awe of you, Borei Olam, because of this place. This place we call it Yerushalayim. Yet, if you look in all of Tanakh, in all of Tilin, you will never find the word Yerushalayim. You will find the name Yerushalayim. We, when we say it, we say Yerushalayim. But it's not, doesn't, it's not written that way. What's Yerushalayim? So the Midrash tells us. The Midrash tells us that when it came time to name the city, <coughs> so the Borei Olam said, should I call it Yira Yira'e, like Abraham did? What is Yira Yira'e? One is fear, and one is love. Fear, you don't want to be seen by that person. Love, you're dying to see him. The Makoma Migdash is a place where you can get Ahava and Yira of the Bore Olam. Or, should I call it Shalev? Like Malki Tzedek. Malki Tzedek, as we know in the Torah, it says, Melech Shalem. So the Borei Olam says, I have this dilemma. If I call it Yira Yira E, then Malki Tzedek will have a complaint. And if I call it Shalem, then Abraham Abinu will have a complaint. So therefore, what will I do? I'll call it Yerushalayim. That's the name of the city. So where did we get to call it Yerushalayim? So great people have taught us. You're right, it's written Yerushalayim. Where did you get that you put the Yud in that extra Yud? As we know, Yud is the letter of the future. Whenever in Torah language, when we want to make it future, we have the letter Yud. The Bnei Yisrael put the Yud in that name because we have such a desire, such a want, such a feeling for the place that we put in that extra Yud. So even though you tell him, you won't find that name, Yerushalayim, you'll find Yerushalayim. We call it Yerushalayim because of our want to go back. And therefore we have a very interesting halacha. And halacha is in Shulchan Aruch, Siman Tzadik Dalet. Halacha says the following. Bikumol hit palel. When you get up to say Amidah, if you're standing in Chutz La'aretz, outside of Eretz Yisrael, you turn your face toward Eretz Yisrael. So that we see very often a sign that says Mizrach, that's only because of where we're located. But if you're on the other side or in a different place, so it's not going to be Mizach, it could be Ma'ariv, it could be 
Tzafon, it could be Tarom, it depends where you are. The main thing is faith toward Eretz Yisrael. Now listen, this is where we need to think about. The Yechaven, when you're getting up to say Amidah, you have to have concentration. Gam Yerushalayim, that you're facing toward Yerushalayim. And that's not enough. Ula Migdash, that you're facing the Migdash itself. That's still not enough. Ula Beit Kadshea Kadashim, and that you're facing and turning and talking. You're facing Kodesh Kadashim. That means when we get up to pray, we have to have in mind that we're facing Yerushalayim, we're facing toward the Beit Migdash. We're facing toward the Kodesh Kadashim and we're talking directly to the one who is in the Kodesh Kadashim, the Borei Olam himself. Which in turn will bring us to that state that we will remember Yerushalayim at all times. As we look in the Halakha, there are special Halakhot how do we remember Yerushalayim? And there's a need for us to constantly remember Yerushalayim. So that, as a, for instance, we go to a chatuna, and at the end of the ceremony, the chatan breaks a glass. He's not breaking the glass to, saw, to show you that the ceremony is over. He's breaking the glass because any simcha that we have can't be complete. As we say, al rosh simchati, at the top, at the height of my simcha. I'll always remember. Yerushalayim, and I'll remember that it can't be complete. And therefore, we have a special halakot, all about remembering the Churban Habayit. See, here we see that we are talking about this unbelievable place that Shlomo Melech tells us that whenever you pray toward it, and he calls it the Makom, whenever you pray toward it, and you beg the Borei Olam as you pray toward it, the Borei Olam listens because that's his place. That's his home. And that's called home. We need to think that over. I came to somebody and I said to him, I give you a certain amount of money, $20,000, and an apartment, and you show him, are you ready to go back? He says, for Yam Tov? For Moed? I said, no, no. To be there. Once I was discussing with the Kala, I said, what are you going to do if Mashiach walks in an hour before the Chuppah? Are you ready? Or do you say to yourself, it took him thousands of years to get here, couldn't he wait another three or four hours? Are we ready? Are we ready to see Yerushalayim in its glory the way it was? And are we ready to go back home to where we really belong? Tisha B'Av is to get us to think. It's to get us to have that inner thought. Now we know that the second Beit HaMikdash was destroyed because of Sinat Chinam. Very hard to define the Sinat Chinam. There is a Yerushalmi, and in the Yerushalmi it says it has to do with money. Okay, we're not going that way. <coughs> but we do have to come to the Borei Olam today and say, I want to see the Beit HaMikdash rebuilt. How are we going to rebuild it? 
Well, the first thing we have to do is overcome the cause of destruction. The cause of destruction is the lack of sensitivity for one another. And therefore, one of the things we need to work on is this idea that we want to be back. We want to come back. And as Shlomo Amalek says, this is the place when you pray no matter what, as he says, if there be a war, if we would have it in mind when we are in Gaza, and we would be facing and we would keep in mind facing Yerushalayim. So Shlomo Amalek says, the Borei Olam will answer us. You need to do a lot of thinking. We have done tremendous things. You think about what has happened to the Jewish people since World War II. How we've come, how we've developed. Not only in numbers, but in sensitivity, in understanding of Torah, in learning of Torah, in growth of Torah, in want of Torah. It's unbelievable, the growth. But there's something missing that the Borei Olam still wants from us. That we sat today on the floor. That means we're not there yet. And the Borei Olam comes to us on this unbelievable day. It's an awesome day. If you check the history of this day, it's been a very difficult day all the way back from the Maraglim and on. In modern time, World War I started on Tisha B'Av. Concentration camps opened up, Tisha B'Av. It's been a difficult time. And we need to do something to make a change. So therefore, as we come now to the end, Tisha B'Av, and the concept of the Jewish people, we don't commemorate. It's not a commemoration. We re-experience. We go through it again. So when it comes to Tisha B'Av, we're going through the destruction. We're going through the difficulties that brought us to this point. We need to rethink it. How are we going to change it? We have this time called Mo'ed. To get together with the Borei Olam as we've discussed. How am I going to make it? That this should be the last Tisha B'Av. Very interesting, if you look at the Nabi, they came and asked the Nabi, we've fasted for 70 years. Sumu, we fasted for 70 years. And now it's the building of the second Beit HaMikdash. What should we do? Should we keep fasting? And the Nabi told them it's going to be a day of kabod, a day of greatness. And yet the second Beit HaMikdash is nowhere near the first Beit HaMikdash. And the third Beit HaMikdash is like the first Beit HaMikdash. And we're waiting for that great moment. But we need to make a move. And as individuals, very easy for me to come to you and say you're doing X or Y wrong. Man, you could come and tell me. That's not going to do it. What we're going to do is our self from within to make a move to make a difference. We hope that we all rise to the occasion and make that inner change, make that inner awareness, so that when the Borei Olam come, is with us, he will smile upon us, and when he smiles, then we have a chance 
that this will be the last one, that we should be zocher, to see the coming of Mashiach, the Mera of Yamenu, that we be able to see the building, the third Beit HaMikdash. And the Gemara, during Rashi, Tosafot, brings it in a number of places, that the third Beit HaMikdash is coming down. It's all ready. We don't even have to wait for it to be built. It's ready to go. Ah, but we say we build the Beit HaMikdash. So the Svarim explained that we read in Eicha that the gates were swallowed in. They're going to come back up. And we will connect the gates to the Beit HaMikdash. And the Gemara and Baba Bakra tells us whoever finishes the gates, that's the finishing part. But we should be so here to see the coming of the Beit HaMikdash, that we should be able to see the joy of what it means to have that Beit HaMikdash, that we should be on that level, and we should rise to this occasion, we should be Zohar to meet one another, and to greet one another in the great place called Yerushalayim, Habib Nuyah, B'meira B'yameira.